Welcome to Be the Teacher. During this particular episode, we'll be discussing costume design. Although we will be addressing the costume mini assignment that's presented during the first marking period of our class, this particular video could be used for the more significant hands-on costume project that you may be working on at this time. Now, let's get into our topic. Like I said, during today's episode, we'll be discussing the costume mini assignment. But remember, to pass this class, many of you will have to complete the costume requirement, and a template for this project can be found at the Homework Central link of my website. Remember, for the more significant hands-on, you'll be doing three costume renderings of three different outfits or characters from your director's treatment and pitch. You'll then put them into a PowerPoint and do three complete clefts. You'll know what that is by the end of this video. They're essentially detailed descriptions of the character's top, bottom, and accessories. This task will also ask you to answer some questions that will be provided in the PowerPoint. Now, let's discuss how costume works. Here you can see some costume drawings. If we go into our text, you'll see that costume designers create the look of each character by designing clothes and accessories the actors will wear in performance. Depending on their style and complexity, costumes can be made bought or revamped out of existing stock that you might rent. Their designs need to faithfully reflect the personalities of the characters in the script. And remember, things like the director's treatment and the director's vision can help you understand the full personality of that character. The shapes, colors, and textures that a costume designer chooses makes an immediate and powerful visual statement to the audience. And there is a lot of collaboration between the costume designer and people like the director, the set and lighting designers, who ensure that the costumes are smoothly integrated into the production as a whole. That means when a person is building a set or doing the lighting for a movie, they want to make sure that they're not changing the color of fabrics or creating something that would clash with the costumes. All these people have to work together. Costumes can provide audiences with information about a character's occupation, social status, gender, age, sense of style, and tendencies towards conformity or individualism. As well, costumes can reinforce the mood and style of the production, distinguish between major and minor characters, suggest relationships between characters, change an actor's appearance, suggest changes in character development and age, or just be the objects of beauty in their own right. So. Where do we start when designing a costume? Well, remember, we go into the script and the director's treatment. Here, I'm working with the following treatment, where one of my costumes will come from. This is the log line. In the 1950s, two spoiled girls who have grown up surrounded by Washington's elite move to a small town in Canada, but complications arise after sneaking out of their house to go to a music festival 600 miles from home. So, Millie and Phoebe are our characters' names. Now, I know who they are, where they live, and the time period that I'm working in. So, once I know that, I'm going to use something called a croquis to create a costume for this character. A croquis is a naked figure of sorts, a black and white drawing of the body that the costume can be created on. Let me show you how it works. Let's go over to the croquis packet that you were given as part of this mini assignment. Essentially what I do is I place a piece of paper over the figure and I draw the original costume. And when I'm done I trace the necessary body parts that have not been covered by clothing. I only bring over the parts of the body that are not covered by clothing. So in other words if I did a sleeve and the sleeve went down to about here, then I would trace the hand when I'm done. If I did a dress and it went down to here, then I would trace the legs when I'm done. So where do I get the inspiration for the costume for Sophie or Millie, the 1950 girls in Washington? Well, I need to do some research. So I take to the internet. By doing a simple Google search, you can see that there are plenty of dresses that can be found for the 1950s. For example, I like this particular dress right here a vintage 50s dress, pink with beads. That would be great for my character of Sophie. So I begin to look at the dress, and I begin to look at the way that the fabric is laying, where all the little lines are. 
what the accessories are, even how the neckline fits, and how it wraps around the different parts of the body. So I may want to print that particular picture out. And again, what I'll do is I'll take the paper and I'll draw my particular costume onto the figure. It might end up looking like this. And remember, any part of the body that is not covered by clothing, I'll trace over. So that would look like this. Once I've drawn my dress, I need to label that particular outfit so that someone knows how to construct the dress, what fabrics to use, and what era we're going for. As you can see from the croquis packet here that's been provided in class, you want to label the headgear, the clothing on the top of the body, the clothing on the bottom of the body, and the footwear of the costume you're creating. So where do you find all of that out? Well, once again, we're going to take to the internet. Now, when looking for the types of fabrics to use, and when labeling a picture, we want to use what's called clef. You may remember that from the beginning of this video. If we go into our textbook here for a minute, you can see clef is the color, length, era, and fabric of the particular piece you're describing. With color, you don't want to say something just like white or red. You could look up paint colors at a site like Home Depot to give the color an adjective to set it apart from the other colors of that same hue. For example, look at this shirt Johnny Depp is wearing as Captain Jack Sparrow. We could call this shirt Mirage White. Next, we want to give the length. This can be a little bit deceptive. The length is the fit and size of the piece. So is it baggy? Is it slim fit? Is it waist length or oversized? And if you don't know, you can Google it. You can literally say something like, what types of shirts do pirates wear? Hey, they're called pirate shirts or Romeo shirts, because I guess Romeo Ward and Romeo and Juliet. So, so far we have a mirage white pirate shirt. Next, we want to do the era. With era, we mean the years the costume is from. And I, for this particular Johnny Depp picture, I googled, when did Jack Sparrow live? Turned out that the pirate of the Caribbean movies took place in the 18th century. So we now know that it's a mirage white pirate shirt from the 18th century. And finally, we want to do the type of fabric it's made of. So what fabric is a pirate shirt? Again, I googled it. What is the fabric of a pirate shirt? And if you remember from when I searched the length, it's linen. So we put this all together to make a mirage white 18th century linen pirate shirt. That's clef, the color, the length, the era, and the fabric. You want to do that for every costume you create. If we go back into our croquis packet, the one that was given out in class, remember you want to do the headgear, the top, the bottom, and the footwear for every character that you're drawing. So let's go back to our 50s dress for Sophie and Millie. Here's the picture here. And again, all I did was Google 50s dresses. So whatever you find in your treatment for inspiration, you can Google it and click on images. Like I said before, I can look for the different information that I need by googling certain questions and phrases. For example, we know it's a 50s dress, so we know the era is 50s, and I can get more specific if I need to. But I need to know the fabric, so I simply googled what fabric is used for the 50s dress. The first thing that pops up is this, what fabric should I use for a classic 50s dress? This particular set of paragraphs has a whole bunch of information that you can read about the construction of a 50s dress. And down at the bottom, we can see that cotton is fine for a 50s dress, linen is too heavy, and that it has what's called crinoline underneath. In the 50s, people wore crinoline under the skirt to give it the look that was in style, that poofy look that we saw in the image. See, underneath there is a layer of crinoline. You can just sort of see it through the fabric of the dress. 
Another site that I could go to is Wikipedia, and I can search things like fashion in a particular point of time in history. That is incredibly useful, so that when I come over to my dress here, I can say that it's a 1950s vintage dress in pink, and I can call the length knee length. Things I'll want to add to my drawing are both hair accessories and footwear. Don't forget that information. Even if the feet are covered up by a long dress, the costume designer will need to know what type of footwear to provide for the actress. By cleffing appropriately, no matter how bad your drawing is, because we know mine isn't that great, you're going to have an excellent finished product that someone could actually use to create a costume. Although you may not be the best drawer, by cleffing appropriately, the person will know what research they can do and they can also know what type of look you're going for. Remember, sometimes when a costume designer builds a costume, they do it out of different fabrics that give the look of the fabric you're going for or the look of the style that you're going for. But they can't do that unless you label the drawing appropriately. So to recap, when creating a costume, you're going to use what's called a croquis, or a black and white figure that a piece of paper is placed over and then the costume is traced onto. Remember, when you're done, bring over any parts of the body that are not covered by clothing. Once you're done, you're going to make sure that you cleft your image or provide the color, length, era, and fabric of the hair accessories, outfit top, outfit bottom, and footwear of your characters. Remember, be specific with colors. Don't just say white. Try to give an adjective that describes that type of white. And remember, you can find any information that you're missing simply by googling a question or a specific topic on the internet. Finally, don't forget that our classroom webpage has a whole bunch of information that will guarantee you success. If you go to the Homework Central link and you click on our film page, you'll see that on the school webpage there is a folder of templates. And within that templates folder, you'll find the costume design template. By downloading that costume design template and opening it, you'll be able to open it in PowerPoint and put in your image that you create as well as the appropriate labels. Also, don't forget, as part of the greater hands-on experience, there are a number of questions that need to be answered, such as when the costume is used, what are the colors or fashion elements that tie into the director's theme, and how some of these elements work on a symbolic level. In other words, why a particular color or a particular style? You need to explain that to me so that I know that you're not just drawing any costume, but a costume that truly fits this director's vision. All right, well, that's it for costume design. I hope that helps. Remember, anytime you get stuck drawing your costumes, you can come here and you can be the teacher yourself. Thanks for tuning in to this episode, and I'll see you on the next one.